Welcome to Target Market Insights, the multifamily and marketing podcast. Each week, John Kasman interviews multifamily and marketing experts to teach you how to find the best places to invest, attract investors, and grow your portfolio. You are listening to Target Market Insights with your host, John Kasman. Welcome to Target Market Insights. I'm your host, John Kasman. I want to thank you for joining us for another great episode. Now, if you're enjoying the show, do me one quick favor and leave us that five-star rating and review. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Now, today we're going to be talking to Cody Butler. Let's welcome to the show, Cody Butler. Hey, how's it going? Cody, I'm doing great. Hey, listen, why don't you take a minute and give us a little bit more context to who you are? Yeah, thank, thanks for having me on, John. So my name my name's Cody Butler. Uh, I'm, I'm an author, author of the 90-Day Marketing Plan. I work with small to medium, even some large businesses, helping them put a marketing strategy in place and execute that marketing strategy to create more sales, more customers, more money, and ultimately more freedom within their business. Yeah, Cody, and I think that's, that's big, right? Because as we talk about, um, you know, how we grow. Obviously, the, the show is multifamily marketing, the Target Market Insights multifamily marketing show. And part of the reason we started to expand and, and clarify that it's multifamily and marketing is to realize how much of this business really comes down to marketing, um, really reaching out, finding investors, finding deals. Every every business aspect of this has a marketing component to it. So we really wanted to shed the light on that and focus and spend more time on the marketing aspects. There's something that really jumps out to me uh, when I go to your website and you have a call to action for potential business owners and it says, are you lost when it comes to marketing your business effectively? And I imagine many people are lost. You know, there's a, this old adage that half of the advertising dollars gets lost or is useless. Uh, the challenge is people don't know which half. So a lot of people are running around hopelessly when it comes to marketing. How do you approach that? You know, for folks who are lost with trying to develop an effective marketing plan, how do you actually start that process to help them get clarity on what they should be doing? Well, I think, I think the first thing, John, is, is you've got to figure out what business you're actually in. Uh, it's like the old Ray Kroc McDonald's thing, say, well, what, what business uh, are we in? And people say we're in Hamburg, and it's, it's like, no, we're in real estate. And most business owners don't actually know what business they're in. So if you're Selling investments, for example, that person might say, I'm in the business of selling investments. And that, that's not correct. You're actually, that's the product. That's your product. You're in the business of marketing. If you're in business, you're in the business of marketing. Marketing is the money part of your business. Without marketing, there, there is no money coming into your business at all. It's, it's simply a product that has no buyer. So the first thing is you've got to understand is you're not in the business of investment. You're not in the business of real estate. You're not in the business of any of those things, you're, that that's the product that you sell. You're actually in the business of marketing. And when you understand that, then you, your focus goes where it needs to go. So wherever focus goes, energy flows. So when you realize that I'm actually in the business of marketing and that's the skills that I need to be developing, those are the, those are the core competences that I need to be working, working on, then it becomes a lot more easier. The, the books that you start to buy change, the, the podcast that you listen to change, the videos that you watch on YouTube or whatever you do start to change. Uh, and that's really the foundation of putting a, a, a great strategy in place is really getting focused on the, the concept of marketing is your business. And if you want to succeed in business, then you've really got to master that competency. It's not something you can just dip your toe into and, and kind of hope that you get by. Yeah. And when you talk about that, I mean, for most people, you know, marketing is not something they're they're trying to become an expert at. Right. It, it's a means to an end as far as what they're trying to do with the business. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, you didn't launch that that entrepreneurial business because you want to get into all the aspects of being a business owner. You probably either had a passion for uh, a product or service that you were doing or you recognize that there was an opportunity to come in and solve a problem or a challenge. And whether it be marketing or accounting, but these other business arms, sometimes they're just not your skill set. So for that person who simply wants to drive more sales or increase their revenue, but doesn't necessarily want to become a marketer, how do they approach this without necessarily spending a lot of time uh, trying to figure out all of the aspects of uh, building a great marketing plan? 
So the the eighty twenty principle applies here for sure. The the, the Pareto principle that says eighty percent of the results will come from twenty percent of the activity. So uh, there's a, there's a few things that are going to really move the dial in your business if you've just got a limited amount of time. And and the first the first thing is I'll cover cover a couple of them for you quickly. So the first one is like you say you're talking about my website. If you go there, it's very clear what I want the person to do. If you go if you go to uh, my website, you'll you'll see straight away there's a there's a big image of the book and there's get the book here so uh, on on every on every web page on every flyer on every whatever it is that you're putting out there you've got to ask yourself the question what do i want the person to do on this page what do i want the person to do on this page of the website and make that the sole focus of that page a lot of a lot of people will have a website or an advert or or some kind of marketing collateral and it'll be like you can do this, or 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 you can get this, or you can take this option. And they basically put every single option that a person can take within their business on, on that web page or, or that piece of marketing collateral. And all it does is confuse, it confuses the person. So if you, if you want to confuse somebody, give them a choice. Put, put, put five or six different choices on a, on a web page. All you're going to do is confuse them. I and if there's one, a, a, con, a confused mind will not make a decision and a confused mind will definitely not spend money. Mm, that's I for like sure. That. Yeah, that's a, that's a powerful point to make sure that everyone's clear on. You talked about if you, if you want to confuse people, give them a choice. You know, and that's a powerful thing to think about because a lot of times we do want to give choice and we want people to have options and pick something that's right for them. But I think in this case, what you're talking about is you want to give people a clear journey. You want to make it clear to what their next step is. You know, obviously you want choices when it comes to actually selling a product or a service. But when people are still learning about who you are, what you do, what you offer, you want to make sure you make that journey very clear for them. Otherwise, they can easily get distracted and, you know, go off and, and you lose them. So that's a really powerful point there about making sure that the actions we ask people to take when they come to our websites in particular are very clear. And you talked about the book. Let's talk a little bit about that, right? You got the mark, the 90-day marketing plan. Um, yeah. You know, for some people, 90-day marketing plan is way too short. And for some people, that's <laughs> way too long. It's like, what do you mean 90 days, man? You can't do this in two hours? So <laughs> explain to me kind of the, the logic and philosophy between, behind the 90-day marketing plan. <laughs> So the the the, the ninety day marketing plan bas basically breaks down the, the the core the core elements of what is required in a successful marketing plan and gives you some some strategy and some structure to put that in place into your into your business. So, for example, I, I would say one of the things that uh, clarity clarity is a force multiplier. Clarity is going to really multiply the effectiveness of what you do you you can be busy all day long and accomplish nothing but you can spend 10 minutes on a focused task with it with a with a defined outcome and you can get significantly more done in that time than the person that spends all day doing nothing so getting getting the the, the 90 day marketing plan is not so much about what buttons to press and the, the the tactics that you take it's getting that focus it's getting that strategy and it's like okay here's what i am here's what i do here's who i do it for and here's some some core structures that need to be in place that is going to be an absolutely solid foundation for you to grow that business. So one one example would be a, a question that everybody needs to ask themselves is, what do you want to be known for? So if somebody says, do you know Cody Butler? And they go, isn't he the 90-day marketing plan guy? I'm happy with that. I'm happy to be known for that. What what do you uh, what do you what do you want to be known for? You don't want to be you don't want to be known for twenty different things. If someone says, "Who's Cody? Do you know ever heard of Cody Butler?" and they go, "Well, isn't he the marketing guy? And isn't he the guy that wrote that book? And isn't he the guy that went on John's podcast? And isn't he the guy that bought a new car last year? And isn't he the guy that sells invest and all that kind of stuff?" It's like you've you've got to pick one thing. If if you think of everybody who you know that that has success, you know them for something. And then that becomes the tip of the spear in the business. So we kind of talked about before, people want to put everything on their webpage, on their website, when actually you really only want to put, you only want to be known for one thing. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do 20 different things, but those, those things start to become revealed to your audience, to your, to your customer base, as they gain trust for the one thing that you want to be known for. So 
step one is really identifying what is that one thing that you want to be known for, and that is going to be your tip of the spear into the world. That's yeah, I think, be- that's, I, I think from a branding standpoint, that, that makes so much sense, right? I mean, to your point, what is the one thing you want to be known for, whether you're an individual or a brand? I mean, as you think about, you know, anything, I mean, you can pretty much think of, uh, one thing that you very quickly associate with a person or brand, whether it be a celebrity or an athlete or whatever the case may be. You know, I think for many people who are trying to expand or maybe you have one thing that you do, but it's more of a, an awareness play and not necessarily the thing you want to be known for, uh, but maybe your core business is something a little bit different. Um, how do you play that? I mean, we were talking about the podcast before we hit the record button, right? And I think most podcasters I know, while they enjoy podcasting, I don't think many of them are trying to be known as the podcast person, right? They're probably trying to be known for whatever business or product or service that they have beside that. So how do you, how do you balance those two things? If, if you are using, whether it be a blog or a podcast or anything like that to kind of build awareness, but really you're trying to focus on another aspect of uh, a business or you, you're making money through another aspect of the business? So a good, a good, that's a great question. So you have to figure out what is, what is the gateway drug basically into your business? So, so let, let's just use my, my own example. So the 90 day marketing plan opens the door to a dozen different marketing services. So that, so let's, let's just like, just throw some buzzwords out there, like SEO, PPC, Facebook ads, you know, or, or uh, content marketing, Google, my business, all that stuff. These are all services under the marketing um, umbrella, but I don't want, I don't want to be known as the Facebook guy. I don't want to be, and the LinkedIn guy and the Google guy and the, because that's just going to confuse people. When, when somebody, when somebody spends the, a, a high ticket amount of money, it's because they have a problem. That that's when people are willing to spend the most amount of money is when they have a problem and that problem is urgent. Now, when somebody has an urgent problem, they want a specialist. So a, a great example of that is is the medical industry. If you were diagnosed with cancer, for example, you're going to want to see a cancer specialist. You're not going to go. You're not going to want to go to a general doctor, a GP, general practitioner, and talk to that person. You're not going to want to go to a doctor that's known for being okay at everything and talk to them about your specific problem. When you've got a specific problem, you're going to want to go to a specialist. You're going to, you're going to be willing to spend a lot of money and the, the, the time frame that you're willing to spend that money in is very short and the amount of selling that is required is very short. So the, the, the doctor that's position, positioned himself as a specialist to solve a specific problem He's going to have a lot, a lot easier time finding clients. He's going to have a lot easier time spending more money or, or getting the client to spend more money with them. And it, there's going to be very little price sensitivity to, to what he's offering. The only way that can happen is by actually becoming a specialist and presenting yourself as a specialist to the, to the world. So the, the question really becomes is that I would ask is what is the highest value service that I can offer or, or what is the most desirable service that I can offer? What, where can I provide instant gratification? That, that's a great place to start. Where can I provide instant gratification? Because ultimately that's what people want. So when you're thinking about your personal brand, when you're thinking about what do you want to be known for, being choosing an area where you're actually able to provide instant gratif- gratification is going to be a great way because that that's ultimately is what people want. And if you can offer that, then they're going to enter into your universe much easier than somebody who doesn't get that gratification. You know, well, it's going to take six months or a year for you to see the results. People are going to go, no, 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 no. People want to lose weight. Well, the reality is it's probably going to take you six months. But if you tell people that, you'd have no customers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think to your point, I mean, that's the thing that's really interesting about what you're talking about, because, you know, we've talked to other marketing experts and many folks will tell you that marketing is an investment. You know, marketing is an investment. It takes Absolutely. time to actually see the results from building out your marketing plan. And even everything we do with multifamily investing, it's very rare that you decide you want to be a multifamily investor. And I mean, dedicate, like really 
commit yeah. to it and you find a deal, you're able to do everything that it takes to get that deal done. It's very rare that someone is able to pull that off in a very short window of uh, time. It takes effort to build relationships, to build the credibility, to, you know, go through all the steps to educate yourself. So all of those things take time, but we do live in a world where people are looking for instant results. And as you talk about that, you know, what the thing that stood out to me was, I love where you say, where can I provide instant gratification? And you were talking about, um, you know, the two things that people are looking for. Uh, they're looking for a specialist when they have something urgent that they're trying to solve. With marketing, I, I guess the thing that is throwing me off just a little bit here is, you know, we talked about where people come in. I mean, they're usually looking for a solve. So when someone comes to you or just has a marketing problem they're looking to solve, if it's urgent, there usually isn't enough time to, to go and build a strategy that takes, you know, a considerable amount of time or could take a considerable amount of time to build out. So how do you balance that portion of it where maybe there is someone who has an urgent need in their business to generate sales quickly, uh, yeah. yet not having the time to really do kind of a 90 day or, or beyond yeah. marketing plan to help drive those results? So I, I, that's a good question. So I, I, there's really two parts to that answer. So the first is like, there, there, as long as you've been in business for a little while and you have some kind of momentum behind you, there are stuff that we can do to get you quick wins, to produce cash quickly in the business. Providing you know, if, if you if you're completely new, there's not that that's if you are completely new, then that's that's off the table as well, right? But if you've been in business for a length of time. And you're legitimate, you know, you've been talking with prospects, you've been, you've been networking, you, you have some kind of network, whether it be a LinkedIn network, an email, an email list, uh, however you, you have come into contact with prospects. There's definitely stuff we can do to produce some quick wins. The second thing I would say is like the ground responds to seed, not need. The ground does not care how bad you need a crop. It responds to seed and ultimately avoiding the situation that you just discussed comes from good planning really again going back to the weight analogy somebody that shows up to a fitness trainer 100 pounds overweight and says i need to lose this weight this week i'm getting married next week well the ground responds to seed not need and you've planted some very bad seed so we're going to have to wait till they grow we're going to have to pull them up and then we're going to have to plant a new crop next spring <laughs> so really the 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 real the real answer to the question is it's good planning you, you can't you can't just show up and say I need a harvest today. Well, I'm sorry, but the law of nature says you have to plant in the spring. You can't just show up in autumn having not planted anything and demand a crop of the ground. You're not going to get it. So unfortunately, there is, there is no, there is no quick solution to, to that answer there. You've got to have the fundamentals in place and you've got to be executing those fundamentals consistently. No, no quick surgeries that we can implement here to, to, to go ahead and do a tummy tuck or anything like that, huh? Well, look, it's like I said. I mean, if you've been dealing with if you've if you've been dealing with prospects and and clients over a period of time, there's some reactivation campaigns that we can run that will turn those into cash. There's there's things we can do that will turn the fence the, the fence sitters into buyers. Mm. But there has to be some fence sitters. <laughs> yeah, you have to have a network. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, there has to be some people that 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 have been sitting on the fence that have not made a decision that, that there's a lot of things we can do to actually push those people into a decision, get them to make yeah. a decision. But yeah, if there's nothing there, if you, if you're just sitting there and you, you have nothing to work with, then, then unfortunately yeah. there's not a quick answer to that, that problem there. Let, let's play with that scenario for just a second. Let's say you, you do have a network. Maybe you have a mailing list of say 500 or so people for yeah. whatever your business or product is. If there was something that could be a quick win there, something that we can pull yeah. as far as a lever, what kind of things could you do to uh, maybe engage or reactivate yeah. an audience if you have around yeah. 500 or so subscribers? Yeah, if, you, if you've got 500 subscribers, you, you're sitting on a little gold mine. So really the one of the mindsets that you have to adopt as a successful marketer, as a, success, a successful business owner, is that when somebody says no to you, they're not saying no, they're saying no, not right now. It's not there, they're saying not right now. They inquired about your product or service, they're interested. You know, I, I talk to businesses and they come to me all the time, and they're generating plenty, plenty of leads, and they say, well, they're just not good quality leads. I'm like, no, they're great quality leads, you just don't understand what they're saying, they're saying not right now. And you have no process in place to, to actually manage that. 
mm. to when somebody says no, not right now. It's like okay, not right now, John. Great. How about I loop back around next month? You, you interested now? No, I'm still not the right time. Okay, well, how about I loop back around next month? And continuing to loop around, loop around, loop around, around until the time is right. Uh, if you you look at the statistics on this, and this this is one of the eighty twenty aspects of marketing that that we were talking about. What what are some some things that you can do to add to your business that's going to have a, the greatest impact? Adding an automated follow up sequence to to clients. Fifty percent of people that inquire about a product will buy that product or service within eighteen months of making that inquiry. But only <clears throat> excuse me, only fifteen percent will actually make that purchase within ninety days. So somebody that. In- I want to be clear. You said fifty percent will buy over the course of eighteen months, but only fifteen percent will buy within the first fifth or in the first uh, ninety days. Yes, fifteen percent of the buyers. Yeah, so thirty-five so percent of that's going to come, you know, really beyond that three-month window. Yeah. So if you think about it, somebody that somebody that it inquires about an investment product or service. If they're inquiring about it, they're interested in it, they're obviously doing research, 50% of those people will make an investment within within 18 months of making that inquiry. Now, the question is, are they going to make that purchase with you? That 50% will, will buy, but that does not mean 50% will buy from you. So when you understand that somebody somebody inquires and it's like understanding where they are in the buying cycle, are they, are they in the research cycle? If they're in the research cycle, then they're not going to buy right now. So if you have a list of 500 people, there are going to be, there's going to be a large percentage of those people that were in the research phase of the buying cycle that said, no, not right now to you, but now they're six months, 12 months, 18 months further down the line, and they're ready to make a decision now. But guess what? You haven't been following up with them. You haven't, been, you haven't got a top of mind strategy. You haven't stayed. You haven't become that advisor and the educator of that person. So they've gone somewhere else. So having having an email follow up strategy is really the easiest way to to make the most amount of money with the least amount of effort using an autoresponder like Active Campaign or something like that, where you give away some value, you give away a free report, you give away something that gives instant gratification in return for an email address, and then we just consistently give them education once a week or twice a week or once a month, whatever you can imagine, whatever you can manage to where when they, when they are ready to make that decision, it's like, Hey John, are you ready this week? No. Nah. Okay. No problem. Here's, here's a little bit of, here's some education. What next week? Hey, you ready, John? No, I'm not ready yet. Okay. Well, here's a little bit more education. Are you, are you ready now? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting close. Okay. Well, what, what, what do you need? I need a little bit of this. Okay. Well, here it is. I'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> But but to be very to give somebody something very usable, if you have that list of five hundred, just sending them an email that says super simply something like, "Hey John, are you still interested in X? Let me know." That's gonna make you that 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 that's gonna get you results for sure. Yeah, these are powerful tips, Cody. I mean, thinking about how to engage your network, your audience, no matter what your business or product is that you serve. And so you want to figure out how do you serve that audience, but then also how do you stay on top of mind? And one of the easiest things that you just talked about was just simply reaching out and asking people, hey, are you still interested in this thing? You know, you reached out to me about X. Are you still interested? Some of them might say, nope, I already bought one. I'm good. Some of them might say, yes, but timing's not right. Most people won't respond, right? So to be clear, most won't respond to say anything, but you may get some folks who respond to reach out. And now you have a chance to really engage with, you know, that, that individual or at a minimum, if it's a low, low ticket item, maybe you just have an offer right there or something that they could, they could buy um, if they are interested in it. So, uh, but great tips there and ways to just kind of engage. And, you know, I, I think the email list in particular and email marketing is one of the most powerful marketing strategies because unlike social media or so many other platforms, you can actually control for the most part, you can control yeah. the email list. You know, I can't control 
who sees my social media posts. Uh, so me having 5,000 <clears throat> followers or whatever the case may be, it doesn't really help me that much if only 10% see it. And even out of that 10% that see it, you know, some of them are, are not my ideal customers, right? So it kind of is a, a little bit more tricky with social, and that's not to knock social, just stating that I think the, the points you made on email marketing in particular, are very powerful. Hey, hey, Cody, I want to talk a little bit more about that 90 day marketing plan, right? So as you look at, you know, new client or a new person, someone downloading that book, which is yeah. available on your website, you know, what are what are some of those key steps to develop a 90 day marketing plan? Walk us through kind of that process and what some of the steps are the things that we need to get clarity on to really build an effective marketing plan. So, so the first thing is you've got to get that 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 point of despair. You've, you've got to figure out what do you want to be known for. We talked about that. You've got to figure out what service do you want to promote into the marketplace. I, you know, I've got a, I've got a number of books, I've got a number of products, I've got a number of courses, but it's always the ninety day marketing plan that I talk about. What what is what is that one thing? Once you know, once you know that, then then it's a case of defining who you're five-star prospect is who is your best buyer who is your best client for that particular service because at a basic law is if you can define your audience you can find your audience with with social media and the world the way it is the targeting options the 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 complete lack of privacy that we have which is one thing but on the, the the upside of the complete lack of privacy is that as marketers we have the ability to reach literally any you, you, if you can give me a very defined avatar of a person, I will find that person on social media for you. I will find them for sure. So once once we figure out what the tip of the spear is, what product do we want to promote and what do we want to be known for, then the next question is who is the ideal prospect for that particular who who is your ideal prospect to buy that product? We define that and then that then informs our next decision, which is how are we going to get this offer in front of that person? And, and that might be YouTube, it might be a podcast, it might be Google Ads, it might be Facebook, it might be Twitter, it might be LinkedIn. That there are a dozen different ways that that we can get in front of that prospect, but we've got to know who we want to get in, in front of. And we've really got to understand what they want. We've really got to understand what they want. It's like if you there's a big long line at a McDonald's. We, we kind of know what they want, right? It's like they want food and they want it now and they don't want to wait for it. So it'd be very easy to sell a hamburger to that person. It'd be very, very easy. So once we figure out what they want, then actually providing it for them becomes much, much easier. It's not, it's not hard to sell a glass of water in a desert to somebody who hasn't had a drink for three days. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it, man. You, so you hit on um, first and foremost, figuring out what is the tip of the spear? What's the one thing that you can create a value that you can share with other people? For you, it's the 90 day marketing plan book. So you have that thing, even yeah. though you have other products and services that you offer, that 90 day marketing plan book is really the hook that you use as the tip of the spear to go out there and identify new potential clients. You know, from there, you talked about identifying who is your best client, who's that avatar. What are they doing? What are their interests? What are the topics they're engaging with? And using that information to go out there and share this opportunity to download your your book or to get engagement from you from that standpoint. And then yeah. understanding what do they want. So, um, you know, as you understand what they're looking for, maybe I'm assuming that helps with messaging and, and maybe even Absolutely. in some cases you may have a different product. Maybe you don't use that the 90 day book, if you know that they're specifically looking for something else that you have a product for, but maybe you can kind of uh, uh, share more context there. Yeah. So once you know the person that you're actually communicating with, because marketing is just a conversation. We just don't, we just don't like you and I, it's very easy because we can, I can adjust my answer based on your response and I can kind of feel where you are. We don't, if we're putting an ad on Facebook or, or direct mail ad or something like that, or radio ad, anything, it doesn't matter. You don't have the luxury of seeing the response of the other person. So you've really got to understand what it is that they want and what they don't want as well. So with investing, for example, it's like, I know I, I, I would suggest, I would think that they want high returns with low or no risk. So a, a great message would be how to get 19% per year return on your investment with no risk. That That's an irresistible offer 
for, for somebody that's interested in an investment strategy? Or what, what the two questions, what do they really want and what do they really don't, what do they really not want? You know, how to lose weight without feeling hungry. How, how, to, get in, how, to, how to get in great shape without breaking a sweat. You know, it's like, <laughs> how, how do you get what you really want without experiencing what you really don't want? Yeah, you yeah. said earlier on, you know, how do you get a great marketing result without the time delay? Well, you know, a, a message there could be like, how to get a 10x return on your marketing in seven days or less, something like that. What do they want? What do they not want? Those, those are the two questions. There's, there's only two things that motivate people in life, and that's the avoidance of pain and the pursuit of pleasure. Those are the two things. So people are either moving towards pleasure or they're moving away from pain. That's it. So what what is the pleasure that your product or service provides and what is the pain that it alleviates? If you can add both of those into a single statement, you, you've got yourself a winning slogan, a winning message, how to lose weight without feeling hungry, without feeling hungry. The pleasure is losing the weight or moving towards pleasure is the self-esteem and feeling good about losing weight. The avoidance of pain is the feeling hungry. How can you have pleasure without experiencing pain? That that's what you have to figure. That's what you have to figure out. And, and if somebody is interested in your product, that they both of those elements are present. You have to somebody that's looking to invest in whatever it is that they're looking to invest in. They're looking they're looking to move towards something, and they're also looking to move away from something. Figure out those two things. Communicate that you can do both simultaneously to that person. I can help you move towards this while at the same time moving away from that. You, you, that that's a winning message. That that's a, a brand that is going to go a long way. No, that's a powerful one right there. Because I mean, to your point, understanding the two the two things that people are looking for. They're looking for that pursuit of pleasure. They're looking to avoid the pain, right? So if you can combine a message that delivers that, now you hook people's interest. Because anyone can lose weight, right? Um, we, we know what losing weight is and what it takes to lose weight. The issue is they don't want to deal with the, the pain that's associated with that if you're hungry or you're counting calories or you know whatever the case may be. So understanding what those two items are and pulling it together to make a very powerful message and to make create a powerful offer is a great way to engage your audience. Uh, Cody, we're going to move on to our bullseye round. You ready? <laughs> that sounds fun. Give me a failure or an apparent failure that sets you up for later success. A oh, bankruptcy. That's a pretty big failure. How did it set you up for later success though? It, it made me realize that I'm not nearly as smart as I think I am. It made me it made me realize that I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> and it gave me the resilience to bounce back and the, the, the skills psychologically to survive in a very tough environment. All right, give me a digital or mobile resource you recommend for your business. You, you've got to learn Facebook. <laughs> yeah, you've got to learn how, and yeah, I mean, you've got to learn to use Facebook for what it was designed for, which is an ad platform, marketing platform. Yep. Give me the book you've recommended or gifted the most in the last year. The last year, I would be uh, Tested Advertising Methods by John Caples. Give me a daily habit that helps you stay focused on your goals. It's actually writing down you know, on paper physically what those goals are for the day. So I'll write down, uh, I'll, have, I'll have a monthly goal sheet, which I'll break down into weekly goals, and then I'll break that down into daily goals. So every day I go and, and I take the, day, the goals off the previous day that one achieved and put them on this days. So by the end of the week, it's almost certain that all the goals will be achieved. What's one thing you know now that you wish you knew when you were starting out? Uh, the, I'm not as smart as I once thought I was. <laughs> get, the, the, the number one thing everybody should do is, is get smart quickly. <laughs> what are you curious about right now? What am I curious about? Uh, enlightenment. What, what, what is the key to enlightenment? Bit of an odd one there. <laughs> no, I love it. Um, and you are out there in Sydney, Australia, correct? Sydney, Australia, yes, sir. All right. Give me your favorite place to grab a bite to eat. Uh, the boathouse at Palm Beach. 
a little little restaurant okay. on the on the beach uh, in the the northern beaches here in Sydney. All right, we'll have to link to that. That sounds like a great place to it's be. A great place. All right. So listen, Cody, you gave us a lot of great information on really what it takes to build a strong marketing plan. You know, what are the key elements that we need to be keeping in mind and thinking about? Uh, and I love your, your analogy on the seed versus need, right? Uh, what are you doing? And, you know, you have to go in and can't just expect results immediately. But if you plant those seeds and nurture it, then you can prosper and have that great harvest. For our listeners who want to learn more about you, maybe get access to the 90 day marketing plan. What is the best way to reach out? So, uh, Cody Butler.com, the, the book's available on Amazon, amazon.com as well. So go to Amazon. If you want a copy of the book, it's available on my website and uh, I'm pretty accessible on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, all, all of those ways, all of the standard ways. I don't hide myself. So you, you can find me very easily on social media. Cody, thank you again for coming on Target Market Insights, the multifamily marketing show. We hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for having me, Jonathan.